Well folks, we're here in Manitoba and I got this nice two-year-old turkey that I just shot. Got a nice beard on it. Not the biggest bird but uh, definitely a mature one and I'm really excited to fry this up for supper tonight. So I'm just going to show you kind of how I butcher a turkey and I've done it a few different ways and I find that this kind of may be one of the better ways just for me because of the way I like packaging it and whatnot. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to just get started here and hopefully you guys maybe learn something about at least the anatomy of a turkey and uh, in case you haven't seen it before. So the skin right at the breastbone, you can see there's this really large like ball basically right where the breastbone is. So I'll just cut in right there and once you get that open, kind of like you would with a goose, Pull it apart. That way I'm keeping the feathers off of the meat as well. Now turkeys have massive breasts. As you can see that on this side is like as wide as my hand. I don't have the biggest hands but it's still saying something on how big this turkey uh, really is. Or at least tur wild turkeys in general. So I'm pulling everything away from the breast. And then this sort of uh, sternum or breastplate, whatever, comes out here. And then I'm just going to basically fillet the breast off of it. So I'm going to start as close as I can to it. Start cutting into it. All the way up here. And then I'm going to pull it away with my other hand. And cut as close as I can to that breastplate as I, can, as I possibly can. It goes way down in there. So now I've got one breast. I'll just clean it off a bit. It's pretty big. That's just one breast from this turkey. And this isn't a huge turkey either. I've shot one that uh, made this look very small. So there's a lot of meat on these birds. This one hopefully be really tender and uh, me and Nico are going to fry this up tonight. So yeah, and then the other breast you just do the exact same thing and uh, then I'll show you how to do the legs. Alright, so now I'm going to move on to the legs and you just sort of keep going on from here. You can already see that they're starting to be exposed from the skin that I already peeled back. I'm just going to continue to peel that back. You can use your knife to cut it even more. Trying not to again get feathers and guts onto the legs. The, the other reason I like this method is you you don't get any of the guts on anything. Not like even when you're plucking it then you have to gut it. There is a chance of it happening but with this way you're never accessing the guts. You can see the first thing I'm doing right now is just the drumstick. So I'm basically just cutting around it, skinning it, kind of not doing the best of job because it's just not cooperating. But there we go. Get the drumstick out now. You can kind of see there's seams. The same way you'd butcher deer if you've ever done that. Um, you're just following those seams around. The leg should start to just come out. And I got that perfectly right in the uh, joint. You can see how easy that came out just with a little bit of guidance with my knife. Um, so there's one. And then obviously I'm going to clean that up and take the leg off. For now I'm just going to leave it like this so that I can keep going. Instead of going right into the other leg I'm actually going to do the thigh. 
So kind of the same way again with with uh, any other animal that you're butchering from scratch. You're just following these seams. Now the thigh, I haven't done a turkey in a while, but I like to put it on its side. Peel it back, you can see how big their thighs are too. And that's one of the best parts on a wild turkey in my opinion. Is these big thighs. Oh, there's a BB. You kind of feel joints in there. Cut into it. I like to start. I like to go from the front if possible. But need a little bit more. I'm sure there's a lot better ways to do this. And a lot faster people who do a lot of turkeys in a year. But for me, who does one turkey a year, just got the gist of it. There. Once you get it most of the way off, you can just give it a pull. And that ball socket there will just come right out. Just cut it out and there's the thigh. And I'll do the same thing on the other side and that'll be everything I'm taking from this turkey. You can take the heart, you can take the um, the gizzard as well. Alright so now you've got uh, all your meat out of the bird and cooling now. It's getting cool out. It's only about four or five degrees outside in reality. Um, I'm going to show you how to take the beard the spurs and the fan off of this bird. So I'm gonna start. I always start with the beard, and the beard's pretty easy. You can see if you come in close here, Nico. You can see when I pinch right here, there's it. There's nothing there, but there's a really like bone right at the base of it. And all I'm gonna do is cut through that, um, cut through that soft spot. Easy as that. So then you've got your beard. I could trim that just a little bit more, a little bit of the, the fat off of it. And then what you all you do is uh, put borax on it, leave it for a week, be dried out, ready for taxidermy. That is my smallest beard actually. <laughs> all right, and then next I always do the fan. On this bird, uh, right after I shot, and I'm sure you can see in the video, um, he started flopping around. He missed, he lost a patch uh, that goes right here, because normally when you're getting it mounted, you'll get the outside, the first one in, and the second one in at least. Um, most of the time I normally just do two, because then you can put a plaque there and it still looks good. The same thing basically with the uh, beard. There's a soft spot right here, and although it is attached by vertebrae right in the middle. You can cut right around that and then I'm just going to twist it off. So you can see I'm grabbing, it's like a knuckle almost, and then the fan kind of goes there. So I'm just going to cut right around it. Can't see what I'm doing, it's getting dark out. But I'm basically just going to cut it right through that knuckle. Now it's just hanging on by skin. Now you've got that. Once again, you can trim this fat off, but uh, you've got that. I normally take these back ones off because you don't need those, but uh, I'm actually going to give this to Nico to have, but uh, he can do it with it as he wants. But that's pretty good fan for a two-year-old bird, Eastern Turkey. And lastly, the spurs. Now you can decide whether you want just the spur section or the whole foot. On a lot, on a, some of the bigger birds, I like to keep the full leg just because it gives a really good perspective, and you can get it, you know, dried out and displayed pretty nice that way as well. 
So just for the sake of doing that, and then Nico can decide once again, I'm gonna give these to him. I'm not sure if he's gonna keep them, but you can cut right through the tendon, right the back of the leg, and that'll open it up. And all I'm gonna do is, apparently not. Uh, I see, I'll just give it another couple cuts. And you can trim those little feathers off, but there's your foot. And then from there, you can just take bolt cutters and cut it there, or a hacksaw, or a sawzall. But that's how you're going to get all of your stuff to display from a turkey as well. Got all the meat off of it, and I'm ready to fry up some turkey. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to click like, share and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more cool content.